huge update for you. I've been tracking betting irregularities throughout Europe. Some of the results going on with Icelandic teams this season are crazy. Someone out there is making tens of millions from this. It's so brazen, it's hard to believe. I think the nomads are getting desperate and overplaying their hand. The window for us to act is sliding open. We need to be ready to pounce if you ever want to see Henrik again and bring the nomads to justice. Do you remember the 21st night of September? As always, if you have been enjoying the series, drop a like on the video. That would be bloody fantastic because we've got a lot of stuff coming up today. Because our first port of call, of course, is the Europa Conference League. We have four matches left in the league, five in the Conference League. There's a lot of different plates to spin at the moment. Luckily, most of the Conference League games are after our league season finishes. So we can kind of get ourselves sorted there. And we've still got a great chance at succeeding some quite quality stuff in the league. We're unbeaten in 17. Haven't lost a game since the middle of July, I think, or might even be early July. This team is absolutely stacked at the moment and really are starting to feel very very good indeed hopefully we can continue that today i would love to somehow find a way to go unbeaten for the rest of the season and i think that would allow us to achieve our goals this year which for me is try and get out of this group and also just try to get top four in this league because i feel like if we come fifth it'll be a stupidly big disappointment but i think we've kind of done everything we can at this point and it's just a case of placing our bets and letting the chips fall where they may. i'm mixing all the metaphors but we're away in serbia today this is not going to be an easy game although that being said FK Partizan did lose to Breitablik. Now, you can see there's a lot of tiredness going around this squad. And this is one of the things that next season, I think, will be much more easy for us with the likes of some of those extra players. Of course, Young Dean will, will stay in the team because this man, I just want to give as much football to as possible at the moment. He has just settled into this team amazingly well. Oh, what have we got in terms of fixtures after this? We've got Vesteros in three days. Damn, I think we might have to rotate a little bit here because I feel like Vesteros is almost more important. I feel like we can make up ground in the Conference League if we were to drop points. But I feel like with so few league games left and with what's on the line, especially against Vesteros, we need a strong team out there and I think we're going to have to just rest a bit for today which is not ideal you might notice the absence of Castilla in the squad at the moment I actually loaned him back to Argentina uh, because he wasn't getting any game time here really and it felt like the right move for him and he was complaining so it felt like something we needed to do did I actually do a selection advice I didn't let's just do a selection advice and see what happens I've got to be honest it's still a pretty strong side really uh, except for really the strike force that's where it kind of lets us down Hawkinson having to come in isn't fantastic but we still have Kiriakou and Sierra I mean that's a lot of strength with Rona and Dai and Darbo in the team too Young Dean in there, of course. With Makacek, of course, back in goal. Two back-to-back -back clean sheets for him. He has looked really good in those games. Just been really stable. And I feel like he'll be our goalkeeper for the rest of the season. I have, by the way, done the next round of scouting reports for our scouting options. Fact, one thing about that, before we get into this match, I want to show you. It's somewhat off topic, but it's to do with that video that I made back in June or July, whatever it was, that I've had a lot of questions about, some of which are actually on this video. So I noticed that a lot of you were having an issue where your scout reports were coming one by one into your literal inbox which obviously is really bad the reason for that is because often you'll have your set slightly differently so what you ideally want is as many of these things forced to the magnifying glass i.e the scouting report because what would have probably been happening is that you'd have had some of these ones ticked which would have sent them directly to your inbox uh that's really bad i have to be careful with what of these i touch because i've noticed this screen is very glitchy and has a habit of resetting itself so i have to be careful what i touch but ideally you want as many of these things forced directly towards your scouting box as physically possible and that should stop that only reason i didn't mention that in the video is because i thought that's how everybody set their scouting up and that was an oversight from my part but here we go first away game in the conference league group stages it's not a tough it's not an easy place to come by any means and we have got a lot of work to do especially with Cissé and Amri being our strike force here Amri I'd normally rather play a bit deeper but for today I don't think we've got much choice I think if we do anything other than lose here that is a strong result for us and I still think there's enough good players in this squad to make stuff happen for us today Young Dean being one of them with a great pull through for Darbo already and we already have the lead Lamine Darbo inside 40 seconds. What an assist for the young man. Gustav Youngdean. I think that might be his first assist in a Rebru shirt, but wow, he's off to a great start in his career. But that is just such nice football straight off the bat here. One incredibly well by Sierra. Slots it inside, but look at that. Just looks up. First time, straight through. I say first time, you know what I mean. As soon as he looked up, that pass was on for Darbo, and it's a great finish. Hey, well, I'm going to be extremely excited to see what Young Dean does in his career when we get to doing the Looking Forward stream. That is going to be magnificent, because I suspect this guy has what it takes to go all the way to the top, like the very top of the game. Todorovic fires one through the middle, and I tell you what, oh, it's just so easy. Really, really good goal from Partizan to find the equaliser. Jarko Jonovic. Unfortunately, Makacek didn't do particularly well when he came out there, but it was just great play the way he took it past him. He could break through. Oh, like that. So you say rolls the defender. Well, he's going to have time to get the shot in. Question is whether he'll get the spot. Oh, he's gone around the keeper as well. It's an absolute keeper fest here, and it's bad. It's FK Partizan 1, Rebru 2, nine minutes in, and we're 2-1 up here in Serbia. Some really composed football. Young Dean will whip a good ball in, and Amri nearly gets that, and Young Dean will get this back again. 
has to be patient here. Just bide his time. Fires a cross in, and it's over the crossbar. But great cross again. Oh, he's giving it straight to Amory. Dabo! Oh, to the wide area. Still only less than 20 minutes played here, and there could easily be another goal in coming here with the space that's available. What a strike from Borko Babic. I mean, again, I don't think Makacek can do anything about that. He's an absolute thunder bastard. It's 2 all here. Jonovic, ball in. Cleared. Uh, everyone's a bit janky at the moment. Rundic from a distance. Zagorats tries to bet what on earth. It's Andrea Zagorats, and it's three. Again, I can't really fault the keeper. This is insane. It's 3 2 to Partizan. Oh, Kiriakou in space again. Fires it across. It's all the way through, and Cissé's there, and it's 3 3. After 28 minutes, it is Partizan 3, Rebru 3. This has not been a good day for goalkeepers, but I must admit. The game has got Makacek at a 6.4. I don't really think, other than the first one, I don't really see what he could have really done about the goals. They've just been absolutely beautiful. What a cross that is. Poor defending and Cissé scores again. 3 all. And Cissé's actually got the touch on him there. Darbo brings it forward. Where's the run? To Cissé. To Cissé. He's through. And it's a good save from the goalkeeper. Could have been 4-3 by halftime. Oh, lovely build-up. One-touch stuff is beautiful. Cissé's through again. Surely not. He's hit the post this time. This is insane. Well, as you can see, um, the fact that this is 3-all is kind of mad. They've had three shots. <laughs> Every shot has gone in for FK Partizan. And the first one was just a well-worked goal. Take nothing away from that. The second two, just I just don't know what we can do about that. They're just insane goals, to be fair. Just phenomenal strikes. But we've done well. I think if we keep pressing like this, we should finally hopefully see this over the line. But it's just mad. What a half. Into the channel for Cissé. He's on a hat-trick, remember? It wouldn't be the first time this season that he's been able to do that, in fairness. Ball in. Martin's header. Saved again. But this time it's coming down to Cissé. Martin's making a run for him. He's got to drop the short for him, really. Or just fire him through. The defender's all over the place. Wow, Martin to make it four. And he hits the post again. I, that's the second time today that we've hit the post in a situation like that. Big header down again. Vaca fresh off the bench. Fires one out for Pablo Rodriguez on the right now. We need a good cross from him here. Nice and low driven one. Ball in. Darbo can't get it, but he's got Sierra in there too. Cissé's shot is blocked. Oh, Martin again looking up. It's Pablo Rodriguez in behind. The, the wing back's through. The wing back has once again had his shot saved. An absolute menace today. Cissé's in again. He's not going to be able to get the shot where I don't suspect. Oh, he is going to shoot. Okay, that's poor. Vaca fires another one. Martin over the bar. The chances have come thick and fast and have been much higher quality than the first half ones as it goes, but we've missed most of them. And Markov's through. And it's a good save from Makacek this time. Vaca, come on, just need that one little opening we can use to get a goal. Darbo, Martin, Cissé. Just that one chance. Sierra, back inside for Darbo. Just looking for that opening now. Back inside for Sierra. Ball across. Cissé can't turn and shoot. Oh, everybody's shooting and blocking. Well, it looks like somehow it is going to be Partizan 3, Rebru 3. And we, I said if we got a draw, I'd be happy. But I feel like we should have done more than the draw. It's been a very unfortunate one yet again for us in Europe, really. I think we've actually played... I, mean, I think we were very, very good. Especially that second half performance was right there. But the goalkeeper just really picked it up. I think Makacek doesn't deserve a 6.2. Like, I don't think he could do a lot about the goals that they scored, really. The first one maybe a little bit. But other than that, I don't know how his rating got worse in the second half, despite the fact he made saves and looked okay to me but there you go uh, hawkinson actually somehow got an 8.1 despite us conceding three goals so hmm a, a strange game a game where once again i feel like we should have won and it's just an unfortunate one they scored a couple of screamers and i don't think there's really much we can say about that but what a first half that was um this group looks weirder and weirder though as incredibly uh, the team i decided that were an easy team braithablik won away at fenabache meaning they now go top of the group by four points um Maybe they're a bit more than I expected, the Icelandic lads. I, I don't know what's going on in Iceland right now, but bloody hell. Um, <laughs> fair play to them, I suppose. We somehow, despite two really bad draws for my liking, find ourselves sitting second in the group. So maybe it's not all the end of the world. We'll have to just see how this one progresses. And I do wonder if once we get to that end point where we've got less matches around, we might actually be able to really hit this group towards the end, hit them where it hurts, and actually take some really good results. Amion. Right, Martin pops it through. Notch, he might have to go for a long ranger here. He's around the goalkeeper. Oh, what a strike. It's Van Notch. He hasn't really pinned that well been that good lately only six in his last 12 and he's missed a lot of chances but that is a great strike and we lead away at vesteros sarpe into the channel he's dragged one of our wide center backs out of space as well which is bad because he's no longer gonna be able to defend these crosses and this sort of thing could happen and it does there you go flavio enrique finds the equalizer for vesteros these guys no matter how well we play against them always seem to not allow us to win it's just one of those days again i think semkin delivers one of the back posts this time and oh for god's sake it is just so predictable, isn't it? We just cannot beat these guys, no matter how well we play. This international break can't, some, can't come soon enough for us at the moment. Oh, it slipped it through. It's Nodge again. And this time he makes no mistake. Vesteros 2, Rebro 2, Isvan Nodge 29 goals this season for him. And we needed that. We've been good. Uh, two all draw would be fair. Amri. 
tries to find Lindstrom here. Oh my god, it's over the line. Trefunovic, no, not Trefunovic, Jeferovic at the back post turns this game around. Wow, the first couple of games today have been amazingly good. This would be a huge win. That right there is really, really something. What a topsy-turvy game that was. Taking the lead, thoroughly deserved it. Um, that Really, them getting their goal was their first sort of action of real note in the game, but then they really did steadily get better and better until they found that second goal. Then after that, it was kind of trading punches for a little while. They had a really good spell at the start of the second half, and we managed to avoid them scoring. And then, with the Noj goal, and then the Jaferovic, we really just took it away from them in the final 20 minutes of this match, and it really, really did the trick. I think we got the win that we deserved, and that's such a big win for us. Also, massive shout out to um, Young Dean at the base of the defense. Really did run the show from there. It was really, really comfortable on the ball, and that was with a pretty tired side we've got and now we have an international break that win though could be honestly game changing because it actually pushes us up to second place in the league we're still seven points off the top we're not winning the title but we have a really good shot actually at getting what we want here still only three points though away from fifth spot um as a result of all that it's not really helped us that much but our goal difference is better than everybody else around us and i think we just need to get our heads down in the final three winning the vesteros game was going to be the toughest one we'd have we still have to play some quite low sides down i think we could still get close to 60 points this season potentially no dean fires the crossing martin's on the end of it and one nil after 12 minutes we take the lead very very important that we get this win against Bumba Poikina. I think this will start to really cement us into that second spot. On the side for Ndai, he could just drop this across for someone. Can he? Not quite. Maybe on the rebound. There he is. Arona Ndai, 2-0 after 16 minutes. Still got some tiredness because of the international break and a lot of players played in it. But nevertheless, a 2-0 early lead is very much what we needed. Earning half a yard. Back for Young Dean. Could he get a goal perhaps? Drops it across. Lovely finish from Kuasi. Another assist for Gustav Young Dean. This man is racking up assists and wonderful performances. I reckon he gets the Sweden cap before he's 18. Hoping for half a yard. Kuasi could drop this across for someone. He finds not. And it's four. Four in the first half. This is like that Kalmar performance. 30th goal of the season as well for Isvan Nodge. I think they've all come in the league as well. That might well be 30 in the league. Well, there we go. Very strong result. In the second half, I just turned the tempo right down and just allowed us to just sit on the result because we just, we already had the win at that point. Uh, man of the match performance this time from Gustav Young Dean. 8.4 this time. This guy is just ridiculous. As I said earlier, I think he gets the Sweden cap before he turns 18. And in hilarious news, all the teams below us also won. So as a result, we are still only three points out inside at the moment. But what I would say is Hammerby, not Hammerby, Jorgod and lost to Degafort, and that drops the title gap only back to four points. If they were to drop a lot, which they still won't, there's just no way they drop that many points. We are not technically out of the title race yet. Imagine if we were win could win it from here, from being seven points back with three matches to go. They just simply won't drop that many points. And we've still got to worry about the teams below us. Plus 41 goal difference now for us as well. We've got Brave the Blick midweek. And uh, well, then things get interesting. Working between the lines, Rodriguez with space. He could even shoot or drop it back across. Kwasi near post. And that's 1-0 Orebru. We've looked really good in the first 20 minutes here. I don't know how these guys have managed to win both of their opening matches. They look terrible. So he's very deep this time. I'm going to have to look for Kuasi making the run through again. Oh, he is making 11 goals for Seiku Kuasi. 2 0 here. Absolutely cruising, my friends. Free kick opportunity for us. It's on the end of the box, which means guaranteed goal for Vatsa. And of course, it's in. They're always in. 3 0 to Orebru. If I look like I'm crying, it's because I just choked on nothing. Here we go. Oh, drops it back and shot for Cissé instead. Maybe the return pass. Here we go. Sierra pops it in. Oh, so many bodies around. Oh, what a finish. Juan Martin makes it 4-0. Martin flicks it on, and Cissé might actually catch this, you know. Little touch. Oh, it's five. The play in the build-up to that was utterly sensational. 12 goals this season for Cissé. Darbo again. Amion. Just again with the one-touch stuff. Jorge now through. This is just insane football. 6-0 to Arebru. And it's, again, there's this beautiful pass and move. We're even playing low tempo in the second half to save legs. I think the big irony is that our attacking output in this game wasn't actually that much better than it's been in any of the previous games in Europe so far this season. But we come up with the six goals today against the guys that have won against... They've won both games so far. And this is what they've turned up today and lose 6-0 to us. Um, that's a really good sign for us. Makicek did what he needed to do. The defense and everything was perfect. It's hilarious seeing them be top of the group with a minus four goal difference at the moment. Uh, there's us in second as well, looking good now. Kiriaku dinks one in. Oh, we've been pushed over. Huge chance for us now because elsewhere, Jor Gordon are losing 1-0 at home to Kalmar. If we take the lead with this penalty, hopefully we will. There's a lot of hope involved in that as it's Jaferovic from the spot of all people. Steps up and it's another penalty miss. Unfortunately, we were unable to get it done when it mattered. Really strong performance. Penalty miss. Cissé missed a huge chance off the bench in the 89th minute as well, which should have won the game for us. And the problem is now we could have been one point off the top going into the final match day. One point. That being said though, Technically, we could still win the title on the final day. But the problem is now, we, we could have been going into that with a one-point deficit to them and ahead of Hammerby. So technically now, if we win, Jurgod and Hammerby lose or Hammerby draw, we would still be champions on the final day if that was to come off. Um, and we still 
technically... No, we are technically going to get top four. There's no way EFK can overtake us now because of our three-point difference and a vastly superior goal difference. So at least we're going to be guaranteed Europe no matter what happens. So here we go. We are obviously... We've got a little bit of an advantage. We're the home side. Whereas Jules Gordon are away at Sundsvall and Hammerby are away at... Oh God, who is it? At Elspore. So they're both away from home. But the thing is, we still probably need both of them to lose, really. And for us to beat Malmo here, which I think is eminently doable, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to lose. I, I think we might win this match, but I don't think everything else that needs to happen is going to happen. And I think that's going to be what probably lets us down in the end here, particularly if we concede early doors, which we might well still do at this rate, actually. We've looked a bit shaky in the opening few seconds of this match, and we really need to not be. We don't want to have to come from... Oh, you spit... This will be scored, of course, because we can only miss penalties, never save them. We just love an upward struggle here. It's Polak from the spot, and of course, it's a goal. It's 1-0 to Malmö, because other teams always score. I can't remember the last time we had a penalty. We saved a penalty. I genuinely can't. Watch the other results actually now go in our favour, and we're just unable to get it over the line. Through our own ineptitude, as Gonzalez now bursting behind for Malmö, and it's 2-0. Are you joking? That's two shots, two goals. <laughs> oh, oh, not today. Now we just need a good cross. Ten minutes to go. We can pull off a miracle, perhaps. Probably not, though. Not ball cross. And it's in. And it's two to Jorge. Right. Urebru one. Malma two. I cannot believe we're still losing this game. Well, in the end, we lost. Um, I I'm just lost of words over those last two matches. The Nourishing one and this one. I we should have had four points from them, not one. Uh, but that's just how our season has been, unfortunately. It's just a consistency of that. It's just... As a result of some late goals, we end up finishing fourth in the league. Fourth! I mean, we should have been second. We should have won the league by probably about five or six points this season. And to, to finish fourth in the league is actually kind of insane. But I honestly think we're on the right track. I think everything's statistically good. It's just a question of a bit better luck next season, really, when it comes down to it. I mean, there we have it. Um, predicted 61.1 points, which would have been what? six six and a half points clear of everybody else festival's got 14 more it's just that this this stuff here is the the inability for our title rival sides to basically concede a goal most of the time we even weren't that bad we were still a little bit poor on this one but it was certainly could have been a lot worse <laughs> like attacking output comfortably the best in the league defensive output literally the best in the league as well on both sides of things and that's all you can really ask for to be the best in both categories and just hope that everything else falls into place i still think that this team is comfortably capable of winning a league next season and with the right little recruitment better goalkeeper few extra defenders i think one of the issues was i think we have some good defenders but we just didn't have enough of them to meet with all the fixture requirements i want a couple more of them but i think with those guys with strengthening the defense and the goalkeeper for next season i think that's really what it will take because we were right there. We had, this, we had the underlying success this season that I wanted to see out of this team from where we were. A good spot. Dudal slips around the side for Nodge. Could he score in Europe? Oh, the keeper's given him the whole goal, and he will. One minute in. We already lead here in Iceland. We take the lead of the group, which is the most important thing. Get this one over the line and get this one going. Dudal flicks it on. Nodge has got the right side of the keeper there. He will get the rebound here shortly, and he does, and it's 2-0 inside 10 minutes. 32nd season. Sorry, 32nd season? 32nd goal of the year for Isvan Nodge. Wait, hang on. What? How did he get sent off? I didn't even see what happened. He just was red carded. Brilliant away now for Braitha Blake. Well, there is a potential for some madness potentially to happen here. Castano, and it's just in. the key What is the keeper doing there? Rodriguez to Indai. I can't believe this game is as close as it is at the moment. Martin. Oh, and now it's three. We get another goal. The 10 men have scored another one, and that's kind of very, very important here. We've still been good, even with 10 men, but that extra goal cushion is really going to help us. Noj. Oh, a little back heel. Pops it through for Indai from midfield. He could think the keeper. Oh, it just goes around him instead, and it's four. Amien. Fires across him. That is some delivery. Is that actually going to count? Or is that offside? That's offside. Oh, God, it's 5 1. I forgot that there was VAR in the Europa Conference League, so it is 5 1. It is a hat trick for Noj. In the end, we've made light work of our Icelandic opposition, both home and away, an 11 1 aggregate result. It's just kind of weird that they were able to win both their opening matches against those other sides who we failed to be. But we have genuinely been fantastic in every single European game so far uh, in the group stages. Anyway, we've created like two and a half actually in every single one of them, to be fair. And today was no different, really. Noj with a hat trick, one for Martin, one for Indai, even the red card made no difference to us. Obviously, we'll be missing Dudal for a game still, but that's very good. Keeps us top of the group as well. Um, still Braith the Blake in there as well as Fenerbahce and Partizan Drew. So despite being on a minus eight goal difference, they are second in the group and we are looking very, very good to hopefully run away with this now, unless we get some more horrendousness against Fenerbahce and FK, which could happen. Fully fresh and raring to go here, which really helps. Nodge through the middle again. This time, no mistake. It's 1-0. Fenerbahce 0. Rebru 1. We deserve that goal. Um, we've started this game fantastically, just as we have done in pretty much every European game so far. This could qualify us too. Smart or oh, here's the run and die from the edge of the box lovely finish 2-0 Arona and die <laughs> I feel like we can have as many as we want we still haven't actually got our budgets yet for next season um, maybe we'll get them after we've done the group I don't know Kuasi from the spot 
And he scores. We actually score a penalty. Would you believe it? When it didn't really matter, it's 3-0 away from home here to a Red Blue. Rodriguez for one more, perhaps, just to really kill this game off fully. Rodriguez, so many bodies arriving. And one of them is Martin, and it's flicked in by Isfan Nodge for 4-0. And another... He must be one of the top scorers in the Conference League by now, now. Sierra in the box. Maybe a low drive? It throw, and Martin is there, and it's 5-0 five. Five away from home in Turkey. We've just been on a different level in the Conference League over these last few matches. I mean, that was an absolute obliteration. Like, genuinely one of the best attacking out. But to come away to Turkey and perform like that, with our strikers just absolutely on it. Their goalkeeper still had a good game, honestly. He still made 12 saves in this game. He's the only reason they didn't concede double figures. I think that's what we can do in games where we just fully fresh and rare to go. Plus 50. We've scored eight. No. I think we've scored 20 goals already in the Conference League groups. This is insane. And we have now qualified for the next round as well. Uh, everyone else is in the negative. Look at this record we've had. And that's with us drawing our first two games. We still have got our budgets. Hopefully, we'll figure that out soon as well. Um, but it looks like we are going to probably win the group. It's incredible as well that Blaithevik went and won uh, FK Partizan and have now qualified from the group. Despite conceding 11 goals to us, they're going to come second in the group. Astonishing. And now we get a final match against FK Partizan to probably put some more goals through, hopefully. It is a massive dead rubber, though. So I don't know if we'll give it the full live comp treatment. I'm more interested in our budgets and planning for next season. Nodges in. Could he score his ninth goal of the tournament? Oh, what a lovely dink. Yes, he can. He now becomes the top scorer in the Conference League. His ninth goal of the competition and what was that 37 for the season now Kiriaku again that run's been made once more notches in again can he go round yes he can it's 2-0 2-0 and a double for Isvan that's 37th goal of the season for him Martin again look the space to put Paul through to Nodge could he score another one Oh, of course he can. The composure is just unbelievable. Hat trick in 29 minutes. Oh, this is insane. If he could get that finishing composure up and get that new trait, my God. Are we feeling a bit fancy again? Jaferovic. Oh, what a strike. Sierra on the rebound, and it is going to be 4 0 in 33 minutes. Eder Sierra with the goal now. So this is someone to look up and find him. And there they are. There's the ball over the top for Nosh. He's in. He's got right side of the defender. And it's a lovely finish. And it's his fourth goal in the game. Our fifth. We've scored five or more in each of our last four Conference League matches now. This is insanity. I mean, in the end, again, that's all six matches we've created insane amounts. This in the final four, we've really been able to put the hammer down and get what we deserve. Nodge with another four goals today. <laughs> One for Sierra. There was a late injury to Kiriaku, which does worry me a little bit, but what on earth? What a result. Plus 20 goal difference. Um, 14 points on the board. It, it just what an insane group. I reckon we could set records for goals scored in this tournament. Uh, I'd, I'd be very particularly we played all those qualifying rounds as well. In addition, I genuinely think we might have a crack at going and winning the Conference League this year. We are that good at the moment with the right signings to make this team even better. And the thing is, we're going to be in the Conference League next year as well, which is kind of mental. Unless I suppose we were to win the Europa League. I guess that could... Sorry, unless we won the Conference League, which I genuinely think is not undoable. This team is phenomenal. Right, now we're finally got our budgets, hopefully. Just so you can see, 12 goals for Nodge in the Conference League thus far. I don't know how many goals we've scored. Uh, we have scored 45 goals in the Conference League so far this season. <laughs> That's 17 more than any other team. We could legit get like 60 goals. What are the record is? Oh, but would you believe it? Most team goals, Suryuska, 20... <laughs> That was our team. Um, what was that? 17? No, 12 years ago. That was our Sunyuska team. I think we'll probably get that if we have a couple of rounds of progression, honestly. That's 14 more goals. This team just feels like it's got all sorts in them. Although, I don't know. We'll see. Most overall goals as well. 17 from Karim Kanate. I get the feeling that Nodge, if we were to go really deep, could potentially do this. Spurs, of course, have won this four times. Before we actually dive in and try to find the budgets as well, I just thought I'd show you this because at the end of the season, it's nice to just have a look at this sort of stuff. And I know that you kind of missed the sort of analysis stats that we used to do back in the day in old series. That'll probably be coming back on FM23 because we won't be doing a journeyman save. So there'll be more like st more stuff we can do. I'm going to do a whole separate thing called coffee and data. More on that later. Anyway, you can see that Nodge this season, 39 goals in all comps from our next year. He's, at one point, he was tracking very close to that. He has managed to extend above it, and he just gets so many shots per game. He averages three shots on target per 90 minutes. It's a wonder he hasn't scored more, but honestly, I'm fine with that. If he gets that PPM, which I don't think he has got yet, no. In fact, he seems to have stopped working on it. It could just take a little bit of time for him to get that. If he could just get that finishing and composure up a little bit more, then maybe there's something there for us. I'm just not sure at the moment if he's actually going to, but still, we'll have to see. And also, 22 for Juan Martin. Fantastic from him. Kwasi with 12 goals too. Cissé did 12 goals from this season. Only started seven matches. Like, that is a very, very good record that he has in this team. Like, what's his uh, minutes per goal? I mean, where is it? It's in here somewhere as well. It, he's just very, very good. Like, when we play, he does score a lot of goals. Often he played against worse teams, I'll admit, though. So there is that as a factor. He's such a useful backup player to have around the club. 18 assists as well for Kwasi. 16 for Martin. 14 assists for Kiriakou. 10 for Sierra. 
So that kind of shows to me that Kiriak and Sierra are the preferred two in those positions, 29 and 30% cross completion, uh, respectively. Um, Amri, I've extended his loan deal for next season, so we'll have him back for another year. I don't know what this is about. He should be way better than that, but we will see. I've liked Amri's work this year. Six assists and three goals, despite only starting ten uh, two matches. I'm pleased with that output from him. Right, let's try and find the budgets. Well, there you go, actually. Noj now is capable of consistently, lol, rounding the goalkeeper when given the chance. I'll be amazed if he does it more than once next season, but we'll hopefully that will improve him. We'll have to see because he gets so many chances that could make him into a 60 goal a season striker, honestly. If he, if he can somehow take the ball around the goalkeeper as much as he gets those opportunities, then good Lord, God help the league next year. Finally, it's happening. Now we actually have interest in a runner and die and he's actually basically come to me and said he wants to move to a bigger club and there's basically nothing I can do about it. Except the fact is he has three years left on his deal. So he obviously wants to to do that now part of me actually would be tempted at some point if porter not for that kind of money that they'd have to give me like 35 40 million if they did i'd probably take it just because i feel like that money we would be able to build the rest of the squad out exactly how we wanted to and i think i could replace a and die for five or six million honestly i really do there's so many players out there that i just didn't look at before because we couldn't afford them i could easily replace him for that kind of cash not that i want to though right budgets show me what you got oh Wait, is it just me or is that less money than we got last year? Not that I'm overly concerned by that. It's a tiny bump in wage budget and it's like, they've given me basically 3 million, which is not awful. We can definitely work with that. And I still think that as with any of our windows, I'll be able to wheel and deal us a ton of money. I, I'm, I don't think that's particularly concerning. I, I think we can make plenty of money in this window and just shuffle things around and be able to sign tons of quality again to really strengthen this side because we want defenders, we want goalkeepers. All sorts of goalkeepers. Probably just goalkeeper, actually, on that one. So that's okay. So this has been a really long episode. I appreciate that. Probably. Actually, it might not. It depends. I tough to know how they'll edit down, honestly. That's one of the problems when it's choosing about. And we will be, obviously, there will be two live comms a lot next season. It's just been the way things have gone at the moment. So, if you have enjoyed this and you're looking forward to next season, uh, Transfer Window, of course, on Friday, then do be sure to drop a like on the video. That would be fantastic. If you are new to the channel, subscribe. That would be gorgeous, too. And I'll see you guys very, very soon for some more Nordic Nomads. Hold your gun. Capybara, bye-bye.